and welcome back to my channel. I've been posting quite a lot lately, so hello again. Um, this is my Ethicality for Equines banner that's from my store and it is not big enough. Um, so I guess I need to order a bigger one. This is also from my store and so is this hat because you know marketing yourself and investing in yourself is the best thing you can do this 2022 and that's what I'm doing by repping the brand baby. Anyways on a less lighthearted note my reason for kind of doing this impromptu video is because first of all the weather is horrendous outside. We're having another atmospheric river, which is a phrase I had never heard in my life before this year. And this year alone, we've had like six of them. Well, not technically this year because it's just 2022, but you know what I'm saying. There's been like six in the last three months, which is like 100 millimeters of rain. Americans, that is approximately four inches of rain, I think. Okay, so the rain coupled with like the melt water from the snow creates a lot of flooding and it's just gnarly outside. So I'm just biding my time and I'm gonna go out there later and deal with the horses and film this now. I wanted to get a jump on this and address this video because one, it's gonna become a really big issue in the horsey and the non-horsey world probably I'm sure PETA is gonna jump onto this and blow it all over proportion and once again what we will be doing is seeing another negative article about horse people be the type of article that people on a worldwide scale with no other experience with horses see this is not what we want because honestly a lot of people who don't have a lot of experience with horses will have negative experiences with horses the few times that they ever do see horses they'll go on like a trail ride for a, at a public trail company and they'll see like skinny horses or unhappy horses or the horse they'll ride it, they're riding will bite them or buck them off and then it kind of just reaffirms anything bad that they hear about horse people and the training of horses and whether or not horses actually like people and want to spend time with them which then gives fuel to the argument that horses should not be in captivity and people should not have horses because horses are better off on their own which is completely false and it's based off of like such a disordered problematic horse industry having all of the worst of it always be on the main headlines. <laughs> Sorry, that was a mouthful of run on sentence. I'm just like so fucking tired of seeing this stuff happen all the time. So anyways, the headline that I am referencing is that Ludger beer bong, beer, beer bong, oh my God, sorry. I, did, I actually did not mean to do that. I'm not making, Ludger or Ludger, I don't know how to say his name properly, clearly. Ludger beer bomb, not beer bong, but it sounds very, very similar. He was caught on video pulling his horses. And I'm gonna include the clip in a second, but first I'm gonna explain what polling is for people who are not aware. The German term for polling they had in the article was Baron. It probably means approximately the same thing. I don't speak German, but polling refers to when you are jumping your horse in an arena in training and you have someone stand by the standard of the jump and they'll be holding on to the pole. And when the horse goes over, the horse will have cleared the actual height of the fence as it is set, but the person holding the pole will lift the pole up intentionally to hit the horse in the leg so that the horse feels the pole, it stings, and then they'll lift their legs even higher next time. It's not a fair thing to do because one, the resistance of a pole hitting a horse when a human is holding it is a lot harder than the resistance of a pole being hit when it's just resting on the jump standard and will fall over if a horse hits it. And two, it teaches the horse that they can't trust their judgment of the height of the jump and then they jump way higher and more carefully and will really snap their knees up in fear of getting hit with a pole and it makes them more careful which is the entire motivation behind people doing this. But it's not fair because you're teaching the horse that they cannot trust their environment and, and it's just mean and unnecessary. Like honestly, like train your horse to be careful through kinder methods man like teaching them the jump can just move at will and strike them out of nowhere is just teaching them to be afraid of jumping and it's completely unnecessary with the jump right being on a standard normally if they hit it and brush it and it falls over it's more of a natural consequence and it doesn't change so then they can know and learn and go okay if I clear this jump height I don't hit the fence and it's not really any different than what they learn when they're in turnout having to learn the consequences of doing certain things or playing with horses a certain way or behaving a certain way. They'll learn that there are more effective ways of doing things that can allow them to avoid consequences. But if the humans change those consequences at will, randomly, it creates anxiety because they can never predict the environment. I would also imagine that it would cause extreme anxiety if there's ever a person standing near a fence for horses. Yeah, your horse can never enjoy their job if this is how you train. So anyways, let's look at the video. And it's blurry, but you can clearly see the person lifting up the poles as the horse goes over the fence to strike the horse in the leg. Honestly, on a scale, 
scale of, of pain, there's obviously more abusive instances of riding than this that would cause the horse more physical pain in that moment, but I don't think that there being objectively worse, more heinous things, I don't, I don't think that's an argument against why we shouldn't hold upper level riders who are supposed to be role models accountable for using methods like this, and then thereby normalizing the idea that it's okay to use these measures to win. And the worst part about this, I think, is that he actually more or less defended this in an article when he was interviewed about this. He took issue with the fact that someone had snuck onto his property to take a video, which I would agree is technically a violation of privacy. However, he also said in the same article that they welcome visitors onto the property. And I understand like the, the consent is the difference in that situation. So I'm not saying that the person who took the video behind the scenes isn't wrong. However, I would imagine it's probably someone who actually was invited onto the property or was on the property for some reason because most properties don't have the arena close enough to a road where you could stand and film and zoom in. Again, this is all just conjecture on my part. Either way, the video was taken and submitted and he defended his claims and said that it was legal and that they weren't breaking any rules with like the touching they were doing with the poles on the horse. He called it touching instead of like wrapping them with poles, which is like what it is. You can't really gently touch a horse with a pole when you're moving it up suddenly because the momentum of their jump is going to be what hits the pole. So even if the person holding the pole isn't actually like winding it up like a bat and hitting, the horse's momentum hitting it, they as a human cannot fully predict. They're intentionally trying to intervene and get in the way and the full momentum of the jump from the horse, the horse jumping believing they're not going to hit anything because they would assume they have cleared the fence, would be hitting that pole and the person would be holding the pole and resisting it to some extent. So it is not touching. Touching would be if you held a freaking feather duster and did the same thing. This is a very prominent rider that has a lot of respect in the horse world and people remark as like an expert, which is honestly the bigger problem because they're setting the tone for what is okay in the industry and when they get away with doing these things or when they're caught doing these things and defending it, it makes everyone look bad because then the general assumption is that if someone that popular and at the highest level of the sport is accepted in doing this and thinks it's justified that everyone else must be just like them otherwise they couldn't possibly be in that position and enabled and honestly I don't really blame people for thinking that because it isn't overly wrong like the problem is there are a lot of people who condemn these types of practices but the people who do have virtually no power and they are very quickly shut down for their opinion because they've never competed at that level and that they couldn't possibly know what causes a horse pain or distress unless they've physically jumped the same jump height which is a stupid argument but I guarantee you on this video if it goes around enough and gets enough views I guarantee you I'll have people in this comment section being like you don't know what you're talking about you've never competed at that level unless you've done it you can't judge you can't possibly say what it takes to train those horses unless you've done it and my answer to that is like okay sure I can't possibly say what it takes to train to that level but if it takes doing that to horses I am not going to do it and I think it is shameful to defend people who decide to do that if that's what it takes I don't believe that that's what it does take. I think that's what it takes if you're lazy and you're looking for shortcuts at the expense of your horse. I think that it's perfectly possible to do the same thing ethically. However, people that choose to do it this way need to be held accountable and we shouldn't justify it even if it was the only way of getting to the top because if that's the case, then we need to change the path of getting to the top level of the sport. If it takes abusing horses to get there, we need to completely rewire what we think being a top level rider means if that is actually true. And again, I'm not saying that this is completely true, but I'm what I would say is that these types of people are very enabled in doing what they do and they continue to be successful even after these types of things come out. And it's only been in recently with like Andy Kocher where he has actually been banned, where someone has gotten some level of accountability to that extent, but even still, he's actively training after being caught using electric spurs and selling horses and still has like an auction company selling sport horses and people still do send their horses to him for training. He just can't go to shows. So this is a problem and I wanted to talk about this because I find that in the horse world the focus is usually racing which honestly ha it's corrupt and it has problems that need to be fixed just like literally any other industry even talking outside of the horse world. Like you are tripping if you don't think corrupt shitty people exist everywhere because they do. Whether there's animals involved or not they will find their way into an industry and they will try to make it miserable for everyone involved. In this industry it makes it easier because horses are also considered livestock. So 
to abuse them and direct all your frustration and anger at them is more accepted than it would be with like a pet animal like a dog or a cat. People can do shit to horses that gets justified because people assume horses are stupid and less able to feel emotions and pain than other animals when really it's the opposite. But it's more justified because honestly, yes, there's abuse in the dog training world and stuff, but you don't see it getting normalized and justified to the same extent. Like the level of outrage that there would be if there was like a video of like a top level dog trainer, like kicking their dog or like shocking their dog for like agility jumps and stuff. The general outrage from the general public along with the dog industry would be higher than it is with horses because there's a lot of trainers who have these types of scandals and then go on to continue being successful using the very same method. So I think it's about time that we start to really consider like what we want in our industry because quite frankly like I am embarrassed and pissed off that someone like this man can be so enabled in training how they do and get so many benefits and rewards from it and get to do what like so many riders would absolutely kill to be able to do show at the top level of the sport and like have horses be their career so many people want this and so many of those people would be nicer and more respectful in their treatment of the horses but a lot of them don't have the same resources or funds to get there so they never get to do that but then we're letting people like this guy and other trainers like him get to the top levels of the sport and get so much attention for it and be labeled like an amazing horse person because of it then you have people that have no representation but would be doing better by the horses like it shouldn't matter what people really think of a horse person if their actions towards the horse are harmful to the horse because at the end of the day we're training horses and we have to consider their perception in training first and foremost otherwise you can't call it ethical you saying it's ethical from your perception of how the horse responds to you and whether or not they do what you want is a completely different take than how the horse feels and experiences what you're asking them during that time and ethical Physicality needs to be based on horse perception and no horse is gonna be like oh yay I just got struck out of nowhere by something when I thought I cleared this fence and I'm this is happening to me for a reason that I have no idea why. I don't know why my person is doing this to me. That's how they would feel in that moment. They don't understand. They don't know what sport is. They don't know what winning is. And a lot of people would claim that their horses do. And maybe they can feel your joy when you win a class. Or maybe they know the general like structure and schedule of a jumper class to know when they've done something well based off of your constant reinforcement over many times of doing this and showing them what the good thing is. Maybe they know that, but they do not understand the concept of winning. They don't understand that they're like an Olympic caliber show horse that's winning against people all over the world. They don't understand that. They only know, hey, I have done a good job because my rider has consistently reinforced me for doing this or their mood has shifted and been positive and I have known that this is good because of that. That's really the only context that they have. Using our ambitions and our desire to win as humans as an excuse for how we train horses and how horses as athletes respond to things is not okay. It's not okay. It's anthropomorphic. It is un necessary and it's harmful to the horses. It's not okay and it has no place in any welfare discussion, period. The other thing that I want to talk about is that like the FEI is like for people who say like the FEI sets like rules up to really care for the horses and that they work to prevent things like this and that the horse's best interests are at their heart. No, they are not. Uh, recently I saw someone post about the FEI posting a photoshop photo of a dressage horse in which they photoshopped all of the foam in its mouth and like the gaping mouth in a dressage horse dur during a dressage test uh, to try to make it look like the mouth was quieter than it was and in the process they photoshopped out part of the double bridle curb and so they could share it on social media and like my question is like okay I get why you might not want to share a photo like that on social media because it doesn't look as good but why not just set your rules up to encourage riders to ride the way that you're comfortable sharing with the public or select riders within your shows that are demonstrating the horsemanship you like and want to share and share those instead of posting a shitty photoshop that is very clearly photoshopped of a test that is posted online where people can see what the horse looked like during it. And I think that that little instance is good insight on the fact that the FEI doesn't really care about the well-being of the horses. They care about the 
common opinion of the people that are paying them the most money and they will do their best to support that while pandering to anyone who doesn't agree with that because they can't afford their shows and they care less about the people who disagree with their rules if they can't afford to give them money. So all of the people like us who aren't paying to go to these shows and showing at higher levels, they'll pretend that they care about our opinions when we get a little bit too loud and difficult, but realistically they don't give a shit about what we think and ultimately they're more concerned about pleasing the people who give them the most money. So what this means for us, like as people who are advocating, is that we do have a lot of a lot of power because there are way more of us. And the more you advocate and educate people and spread the word about concerning things and then give a platform to people who are doing things the way that you like, the more you show, first of all, the better side of things while highlighting why the bad side is bad. And then you create buzz and chatter and you'll generally Generally get people who are on the bad side that'll start getting really loud and defensive and they'll start digging themselves their own holes by making themselves look stupid and showing how little regard for welfare they have and how bad their understanding of equine behavior and their horses general needs are you'll usually see a lot of that and we've seen that with people like Danny Waldman saying that she doesn't turn out her competition horses and then trying to say that it's totally fine and they have individual needs and no one can judge when that is like scientifically incorrect and Andy Kocher as well when he got called out for his electric spurs initially and he tried to say that he was actually holding a clicker to jump his horses with like a clicker to reward them because you know everyone who clicker trains absolutely loves to ride in like bike chain gags and really harsh equipment that is completely reliant on using pain to leverage control that's what every clicker trainer does don't you know that's the key marker of positive reinforcement but what I'm saying is when they get backed into a corner, a lot of these types of people react like a trapped animal and they'll make their situation worse by really highlighting their problem. Whereas people who do make welfare mistakes to their horses and do stuff at the expense of the horse, when they're called out on it, if they actually realize that it's wrong and feel bad about it, their response is inherently different because they'll be first of all quicker to blame themselves and you'll notice a distinct change in how they do things after that usually, even if it takes a little bit initially. But the people People who are more concerned about just like doing damage control will do whatever they can to try to draw the heat off of themselves and justify what they're doing and then do as little as possible to actually change. They'll just do the bare minimum what they have to do to get like basically allowed back into the sport and accepted enough to continue doing their job and getting paid for it. Since we are considered not important people by these big show, show organizations because we don't pay them for the shows and we're not competing at those levels, what we have to do is put pressure on what we want to see because we are their viewers we're their viewer base most of the people who are watching and like drooling over upper level equestrians and like supporting them and wanting to train with them and wanting to go to their clinics most of those people never compete at the same level as their idols so as the consumer we have a lot of power in that if we start to want to consume different things and if we start to not support certain organizations or if they support certain riders or if we keep calling them out when they cover certain riders on their feeds and when they support riders we don't support on their feeds if all of the press is negative they're gonna very quickly have to start changing their tone to retain their viewers what we want to do is hold them accountable like on FEI's page they have an Instagram page they have a Facebook page comment on their stuff and ask them what they're gonna do to discourage these types of practices in their upper level rider comment on their stuff and be like did you hear that Ludger beer bomb was pulling his horses are you okay with this? I've heard this is a common practice with a lot of upper level show jumpers. This is not the first person who is guilty of it. What steps are you going to take to discourage this type of behavior in your upper level professionals who are role models for so many young and developing riders? You can send them messages and be like, hey FEI, you've said numerous times on your rule books, on your pages, in the media, everywhere, that you very much value the welfare of horses. If this is the case, why are there so many of these welfare problems and list them off, I'll give you some, that are still consistently existing within your shows and being rewarded. For example, horses being ridden behind the vertical in dressage. They have actually gone through tests of upper level dressage tests and picked apart the tests and given percentages for how much percent of the tests the horse is behind the vertical for and found that horses who score the most highly had a higher percentage of being ridden behind the vertical throughout their test than horses who scored lower. This is something that's even seen in young horse classes where 
where they should be encouraging that forward nose poking out stretching gait for young developing horses and then you have show jumping where there are so few bit regulations that people can be wearing the whole kitchen sink on their horse and hauling off on their horse throughout the course as the horse goes like this with its tongue hanging out of its mouth and you can see like a serrated freaking double twisted wire gag as their rider just hangs off their mouth and pilots this out of control horse around the course solely by the volition of pain and this is allowed there are so few bit and equipment regulations in show jumping and they're even allowing people to pair these bidding rigs with like running martingales and other types of gadgets that make it even harsher or like rope nose bands over top of a gag bit with a serrated mouthpiece over top of a figure eight and like having two flashes like it is messed up it's absurd it's like the barrel racing of the the English industry. There needs to be more rules and this isn't to criticize people who compete in these sports and do them properly because there are show jumpers that actually do enough flat work to get around the course in a pretty manner without using a freaking like steak knife in their horse's mouth and same with barrel racers but all of the ones that do not do that and cover up their bad riding by doing things at the expense of the horse's comfort they make all of the good guys look so bad and this is why we need to start trying to push for better riding and this isn't to say that we're like telling these people hey you can no longer be in this sport anymore it's saying hey if you're going to continue competing in this sport it's going to be on these terms and you're going to have to adapt your horsemanship accordingly if you wish to continue to compete because we know these things are harmful to the horse and we're deciding to change the path that we're on knowing what we know now sorry for diverting but i'll give you more things that you could hold the fei accountable for another one would be anything pertaining to young horse classes there should not be young horse classes that require young horses to do stuff that is well beyond the capabilities of their age or what we should do if we're trying to promote longevity because the purpose of the young horse classes is to create horses that are going to be upper level horses in the future. Doing so should not come at the expense of their mental and physical comfort and if you push them too hard too young you're actually robbing them of what would be a lengthy career in the future. So young horse classes should be catered to the development of young horses which should actually be the foundational basics like for example the young horse jumper classes that we have here like I don't know if all of them are FEI sanctioned but a lot of the four-year-old classes are like three foot three three six and some of these horses are literally barely four how are you getting your horse jumping that high at that age without starting doing things too quickly wouldn't it be better to do a young horse series where it's mostly flat work based and you're showing your horse's foundation at the flat and then doing like a gymnastics series where you're just going through like a grid at like a moderate height or a small course set at like two three two six that would be way more friendly to a four-year-old or do like a flat class for the four-year-olds and then a free jumping shoot or something all of these things would be a better way of accomplishing the same thing but with more concern for the horse but like what they're actually trying to do is promote young horses in the way that people with money like to see them which is like flashy big fences horses with big gates that are doing more than what they're supposed to be doing for their age just because it's more interesting for those types of people to watch and that's not for the best interest of horse welfare and i would love to know the actual percentages of horses competing in the young horse class that actually go on to have lengthy careers in the grand prix ring um, for both dressage and show jumping i would be very interested in knowing what percentage actually lasts and how long the average career of those horses lasted lasts versus horses who did not do the young horse series and if the purpose is for development of future competition horses they should post those statistics for us all to see because then it would prove whether or not their program is working and how sound those horses actually are and whether or not it actually helps facilitate future careers but anyways this has become a mishmash of like a bunch of different topics that piss me off so basically all i'm saying is that like enough is enough we're gonna be our own undoing if we don't start ho holding upper level riders more accountable and expecting more of our role models because they are like who is being seen the most in the industry so of anyone they have like the biggest responsibility for good welfare and good horsemanship and in the event that they ever sway from this and make a mistake because obviously humans aren't perfect you can make a mistake out of ignorance or some people can like have a moment where they do something that's out of character and horrible or lazy like rushing and putting like unfair equipment on their horse or having a spur mark in the middle of a competition they can do something like that and you can come back from it if you acknowledge it and you're like i don't want this to be 
something that I'm known for and I don't stand for it. Like, even Marilyn Little with her bloody mouths, with her horses, if she said enough is enough, like, this is embarrassing, I feel bad for my horses, this is reflecting poorly on me as a horse person, and I do not want to keep putting my horses through this, so I am going to be making some immense changes in my bit setups, and I am going to be ensuring that this never happens again, because I don't want this to reflect on me or hurt my horses. That's how you know that someone has made the necessary changes to their riding and actually cares about the horse. It's not the absence of making mistakes that makes someone a good horse person. It's how they reflect on and change from those mistakes. And this isn't even to say that you have to make a mistake, instantly own it, and immediately get better and completely change your horsemanship. It doesn't always have to be immediate. You really see how over time how much people value their horses by the work that they're willing to put in as we get more science and as we know what is the kinder ways of accomplishing what we want to do with our horses and honestly most of us who jump our horses and who compete over fences would never even consider pulling our horses but it is not uncommon to hear of with upper level riders and riders who are riding in big rings and competing a lot it is not an uncommon practice and the fact that it isn't shows that we have a lot of work to do in redefining what we consider good horsemanship and redefining what we consider winning horsemanship and it starts with holding our show organizations accountable and setting the tone for what kind of role models we want to see on a global scale in the horse industry and there are enough good riders out there who produce good horses and who can compete at high levels and do so ethically that there's no need to continue supporting this type of stuff and continue defending people that do this you can say that you think Ludger Beerbaum is a good horse person but he isn't in this situation Doing this is makes him a bad horse person because he w made that decision. In order to continue to be a good horse person in the future, he needs to own the fact that this is an unacceptable method of training and do better. And until he does that, he's not a really good horse person because he's not able to own his own mistakes and he's doing that. He, he's defending himself at the expense of his horse's well-being. So he could be doing better. And we should all hold people like him more accountable than we would anyone else. I see so many people online being shitty to like beginner riders who are just jumping their first couple fences and getting mad at them for hauling off on their horse's mouth or catching their horse in the mouth or forgetting to drop the reins when they fall off and panic and have like a grab response which is a normal thing to do and just being mean to these kids but then the same people will defend their upper level favorites when they do way worse shit while having way more experience, more ability to have patience over time, and are better riders overall than a new rider. So it's absurd because it's not that horse people aren't good at criticizing each other because they're very good at bullying riders that they view as less important, but then they will defend actual abuse when their favorites do it at the upper levels because they'll go, oh, if you've never ridden at that level, you can't know. But it's like basic welfare for horses will never change at the levels. Horses have the same needs, the same things scare them, and they're not going to suddenly be like, oh, now that I'm a meter 60 horse, I actually really enjoy when look Edgar hits me in the leg with like a spruce tree. It's really nice, man. I've, I'm suddenly a masochist. That's not what happens. They're horses still. They're still flight animals. They're not going to enjoy that. Riding at the upper levels means that you might be able to pilot yourself around a meter 60 course better or ride a Grand Prix dressage course better, test better but it doesn't mean that you're better and more adept at reading your horse's stress and pain signals. In fact, it might mean you're actually more desensitized to them since you see them so often and since it's more advantageous to ignore them so that you can continue to competing and doing what you want. Anyways, I hope that this was helpful and gave some people some information that they can use to help pick their role models in the future. And I encourage all of you to hold your show organizations accountable for their rule books, for what they allow in the ring and what they let fly with like the upper level riders that they support and any changes you would like to see. Like after all, you're the consumer guys. Remember that they get a lot of their media attention and like fan energy from people like you, not from their upper level professionals. So we can really set the tone for how the public receives what they post and the decisions they make and you can put a lot of pressure on them using that and change is coming like a lot of people want to do better as they know better and we should set the show organizations up in the general expectation of like the public and the average rider up so that we're getting rewarded for good horsemanship and kind treatment of horses we shouldn't enable people 
at getting to the top simply because they have the money to pay the entry fees by letting them ride in whatever bidding rigs that they want to even at the expense of their horse because someone who can pilot a horse around a meter 60 course in a kinder bidding setup deserves to be there more than someone who can afford to be there but has their horse going around in something that's inherently painful if you know what I'm saying like the, the people who are going to do it ethically deserve to be there more than anyone even if they technically can't afford the entry fees and we should be setting up initiatives to allow those people to be there to set a good example and set the tone for what we want to see and help change the industry instead of continually enabling people who are lazy and make mistakes and make selfish decisions at the expense of their horse and then put all that stuff out into the mainstream media and allow everyone to hate horse people because of it and get all these crazy misconceptions about horses and the horse-human relationship. Or even if they don't think horse people are all abusive, they'll have insane misconceptions about what it takes to train horses that will then set them up to be more harsh and abusive to horses if they ever handle them because they think that there's no other way of doing this because it's that normalized in society. And it's that that we typically see is the harsher methods of training not the better ones so we could all do better and we need to hold people accountable and it doesn't mean that you can't leave room for knowing that they could grow and change and become a better person and rider but that doesn't mean they shouldn't be held accountable when they do something wrong and I truly hope that Ludger Beer Bomb is held accountable for this because it's just lazy and someone who can train without using those cruel methods deserves to be where he is and he deserves to be stripped of all that in my opinion until he can train better anyways thank you for watching guys happy horsing and yeah don't don't forget that just because the FEI is a big organization and just because there's big show organizations for different breeds and different industries doesn't mean that we can't make change Complacency makes no change. Believing that your voice doesn't matter makes no change. But speaking out and trying to educate people and trying to use your voice for good and to speak up for what you believe in at least has the potential to make change even if it's not immediate. So you can either be complacent and never have it happen if no one else makes the steps like you or you can speak out and you can potentially make a difference. So yeah, those are your options. And if you're interested in any of my merch, like this thinking cap, which is what made me very smart doing this, or this, because again, a lot of these upper level riders are normalizing not fucking letting your horses out of stalls and not having turnout be viewed as a necessity. Let's stop them because they're teaching young people who love their horses and who actually want to do best by them. They're teaching them that certain types of necessary care are just optional. And then those kids are corrupted for life after that and it's way harder to address those biases later in life so let's normalize good horsemanship and Ludger if you're watching this I would love to come have you jump some jumps here and I'll just carry like a bamboo swatch and hit you in the shin when you go over and we'll see how much you like being touched like that cheers you can shop these guys at the link down below in my description peace out friend